<laughs> this morning, Gary Lineker seemed to have had enough of the story he's centre of, as perhaps some of the public have. I've already said what I'm going to say on Twitter. Um, if I say anything more now, it just encourages people to doorstep me. For the last six days, a tweet he published criticising the government's controversial asylum plan has slowly overshadowed the policy itself. After asking him to step back and a weekend of humiliation as some of the corporation's star presenters refused to feature without him, today the Director General announced Gary Lineker was coming back. In a statement, Tim Davey apologised, acknowledging it had been a difficult period for all and that Gary Lineker is a valued part of the BBC. He also said... The BBC has a commitment to impartiality in its charter and a commitment to freedom of expression. That is a difficult balancing act to get right. Accordingly, we are announcing a review led by an independent expert reporting to the BBC on its existing social media guidance. Tim Davey has so far only granted interviews to BBC colleagues, but told them today he's not swayed by political pressure. That is not how we work editorially in the BBC. Um, it's a convenient narrative, it's not true. Gary Lineker responded on the platform where this Ferrari began, and in a series of tweets he said... I'm delighted that we have navigated a way through this. I want to thank you all for the incredible support. Adding that he is... Immeasurably proud to work with the best and fairest broadcaster in the world. And finished off the thread with this final thought. However difficult the last few days have been, it simply doesn't compare to having to flee your home from persecution or war to seek refuge in a land far away. A hint, perhaps, that he will continue to speak out on the topic that started this. So, a statement from both sides that seems to draw a line under this particular fallout. But questions over double standards and the politicisation of the BBC remains. The corporation now finds itself in an invidious position in which both sides are angry. Those who think it needs to be more impartial say they've caved to pressure. The other side are furious that a sports presenter was taken off air for showing his political opinions in the first place. Tim Davey has made impartiality the cornerstone of his editorship. Desperate to avoid further funding cuts, the corporation has trodden a fine line against a backdrop of threats to reduce or even scrap the licence fee. His impartiality crusade, unhelped of course, by the current investigation into the BBC chair, Richard Sharp, after he admitted acting as an intermediary for a loan for the then Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, who then appointed him. Today, the current Prime Minister distanced himself from the appointment. That process happened before I was Prime Minister, it had nothing to do with me, uh, and at the time was conducted with all the way that it should have been. Now, that, that process is being reviewed. Why do you think this leaves the BBC? I think fundamental lasting damage will be done if they keep trying to cling on to somebody as chairman of the BBC. He has got to go. That's why this thing doesn't die with Gary Lineker. Um, and I think once he goes, and maybe even better if the BBC and the government could, could agree that it would be sensible to change the means by which the chairman is appointed so it doesn't involve the prime minister or whichever party, then I think, you know, the BBC can, can carry on and carry on and be very, very strong. The BBC is now tasked with rebuilding from a disastrous few days, hoping they can go back to delivering the headlines instead of featuring in them. We did ask for an interview with Tim Davey and Richard Sharp, but neither of them were made available. Earlier, I spoke to Mark Damazer, former controller of BBC Radio 4, and I began by asking him, with leaders of Labour, the Liberal Democrats and SNP, all saying the BBC chairman Richard Sharp should resign, is it untenable for him to stay? I think that if at the end of all of this, after the social media guidelines are looked at, and this is a hypothesis, I don't think it will come to this, but if it did come to the fact that Gary Lineker couldn't live with the BBC's guidelines once they're reworked and rethought, and he went and Richard Sharp stayed, I wouldn't want to be the lawyer to argue that case, even on a no-win, no-fee basis. I just, I just don't think it's going to work. Whether he can stay in any event is pretty marginal, I would say, and I think his position is significantly enfeebled. On the social media guidelines, I mean, they are presumably going to have to write guidelines that enable Gary Lineker to remain as presenter of Match of the Day? 
Um, too cynical, I, too cynical, Krishnan. I mean, that may be the outcome. Look, there, there are various shades of outcome here. It may be that the BBC does the consultation and thinks that the guideline is roundabout right. Uh, if it does that, there will always be room for discretion about how it's interpreted. Uh, and there will always be grey areas um, and we'll go on living with that regime. That, that's one possibility. And that Gary might privately, after a period of reflection, accept the fact that this one last Tuesday was a bit too strong. That's one possibility. The other is that they abolish the guideline altogether, in which case what they say is if you're in news and current affairs, the rules are extremely strict and you abide by them. And if you don't, you're out. And if you're not in news and current affairs and you're a freelance presenter, even if you've got a high profile, as Gary Lineker does, then it's OK because the audience understands that you're not speaking for the BBC and it doesn't contaminate the BBC's impartiality brand. That's another outcome. And the third is somewhere in between, which is that they redraft it. Can you explain why people think, some people think it does damage the BBC? Because you know, what you might say is, well, if he's open about his opinions, we all know what Gary Lineker thinks. We all know he was against Brexit, all of those sorts of things. Why, why does that damage the BBC's brand by comparison to that sort of creeping, insidious... Um, bias that may be within the BBC that is hidden. He is a very, very highly paid BBC presenter who has a very, very large profile that derives from the BBC. And therefore, when he tweets, uh, all of that is refracted back, the argument would go, I'm not saying I endorse it, into the way many audiences who don't agree with Gary Lineker's views see the BBC as a whole. Now, it could be that's just a kind of their problem and they, they should snap out of it and realise that Gary is only, in inverted commas, a sports presenter and what he says has no implications at all for the BBC and its journalism. Yes. Now, that's the proposition that this consultation needs carefully to examine and weigh it all up. Mark Damas, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Well, Labour's Shadow Culture Secretary, Lucy Powell, joins us from Central Lobby in the Houses of Parliament. Richard Sharp is showing no signs of resigning. Should Rishi Sunak sack him? Well, only uh, Rishi Sunak and Lucy Fraser, the Culture Secretary, have the powers to do that. Nobody else uh, does. And I think they should be taking a much more active role in this situation. Because, of course, yes, he is now under investigation for whether he declared everything he should have declared during his appointment process and I think that's becoming ever clearer that he didn't but that investigation is only happening because I asked for it it was me who got that investigation happening not the government so the government have actually put up their hands and said it's nothing to do with us well it's everything to do with them because they appointed Richard Sharp in the first place and, yeah. and they and they alone are the only ones who have those but powers and I think that a lot of right people might be confused as to why this has got anything to do with Richard Sharp there's the Gary Lineker thing and there's the Richard Sharp thing what have they got to do with each other well I think they have a whole lot to do with each other because it is about impartiality of, of the BBC and those things coming under question different questions but under question by both of these situations um, but more importantly I think in these times of crisis in these moments it is up to the BBC chair to be the um, top of the tree, if you like, providing confidence, credibility, reassurance and independence uh, to staff, to the audiences, to the public and to everybody else. And he is completely incapable of performing that role okay. in this case. What so I think it is, and, and, and in fact, a review of social media guidelines, for example, or, or those kind of things, that those reviews should be done at a board level, should be being led by the chair or somebody from the board, but we don't have trust in, right. in the, the chair to do that. So that's why it's a problem. Would the government change the way the BBC is governed? Would it, would it commit to not have any kind of political supporters or donors made BBC chairman that... People like Robbie Gibb, Theresa May's former spin doctor who's on the board. You wouldn't have people like that who are obviously party political. Well, I've been really clear that I want the next Labour government as part of the next BBC Charter review, which will be coming up uh, fairly soon after the, the next election, to look at how we can make the BBC more independent. Yeah, but will you promise to depoliticise it? To say well, we won't put any donors the, on there? The, these are things that we, will, that we will look at, of course, in the course of that, and I'll be saying more about that in, That's not much in, of coming, a in coming weeks. Well, no, I've been, I've been really clear, actually, much more clear than, than most, that we 
want to see a BBC that is truly uh, independent and is free from political interference, something that isn't the case at the moment. The charter renewal period is very short. We're seeing with this government, you know, constant attacks on the BBC and particularly having a sword of Damocles hanging over it at the moment about whether the licence fee is going to continue or not at all. A sword that they are happy to leave dangling um, right up until the general election because they know that will give yeah. them more leverage I and mean, that's, that's what we've seen problem, happening. I mean, you, you could say, you know, you could forgive Tim Davey for thinking, well, uh, you know, an impartiality crusade is the way to deal with Nadine Doris, who was threatening, you know, that there wouldn't be another licence fee settlement and a government that was clearly sort of targeting the BBC, albeit that seems to have uh, receded now. You know, again, Labour could commit to say, we will totally depoliticise the BBC charter process, give it to an independent bunch of people, they can decide what the licence fee should be. Well, we are going to be looking at all the different ways that you could do that. I am committed to a more independent uh, BBC. I am committed to the future of the BBC as a universally publicly funded uh, broadcaster that, that curates our national conversation that we're known for around the world. That, that creates so much soft power uh, for us. And all of this uh, fiasco this week has damaged that international reputation greatly. How would we respond to hearing from another country, let's say Russia or China or somewhere, that a presenter was taken off air off a state broadcaster because they tweeted something that the government didn't of the day didn't like. Thank you very much indeed.